It's Friday, January 21st, and this is now on H&N. Oh, kind of sad. An end of an era. Some popular eateries are being pushed out to make way for a condo development. And that does happen a lot when you're investigating criminal conduct. Federal prosecutors who led the corruption probe into the Kealohas make it clear they're not finished. It's a far cry from your average onion. I'm Ian Lee with Why Growers Say These Won't Make You Shed a Tear. These stories plus another cruise ship docks in the state. All that coming up on this Aloha Friday edition of This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. This is now on this Aloha Friday. You got Jonathan and Mark here in the H&N Digital Center. We've got a lot of news to get to today. But first, the restaurant scene near Ala Moana is going to look a lot different very soon. That's right. Several shops and businesses near the shopping center are looking for new homes ahead of another high-rise condo development in the area. Casey Lund has more in today's Talker. Just to give you some context of where we're talking about in town here, this is K.A. Aomoku and Rycroft Street. A lot of these businesses in here are the ones that are going to be displaced when that new development comes in. Many of those small businesses are still trying to work out a plan and find a new location, while others have already made those arrangements. Either way, all of those businesses in that block we're told have to be out by January 31st. Frolic Hawaii broke this story and has been a big help gathering information about who's going where and the different situations each of these businesses is dealing with. Signs like these aren't hard to find when you walk around this shopping center. Places like Asahi Grill, which had its last day on Thursday, are trying to find their next place to open up. Same with Yakiniku, Don Day, Don E Don, and Ben Dong Bistro. Oh, kind of sad to go. We've been here like 11 years, and I know other restaurants too, they're moving everything by this uh, renovation and uh, building the new building. So I know for, I think it's hard for everybody. And I want to thank all the regular customers and all the customers supporting us all this time. Some local favorites like En Hakore Cafe have decided to close for good. Many of the businesses that feature outstanding Korean food have been fortunate enough to find new leases in retail space nearby. Shops like K. Al Moku Produce, Menchenko Te, Soda Bowl, and Yogurt Story are all relocating in the same neighborhood. Still, after all these businesses have been through in the last couple of pandemic years, January 31st is a day many of them were dreading. The K. Moku renovation was you know, the story was going around for so many years. We we're kind of expecting to move Sun when, but not exactly when. But when we first heard about the date, that was a little surprise. But in the same time, you know, you know something new. Okay. New beginning. Gotta stay positive. Popping up in place of those businesses, a massive new twin tower development, the park on KAL Moku. And they're selling studios, one, two, and three bedroom residences right now. I was able to talk with the developer Wairith Matsubura from Non Incorporated Hawaii, who says this project's been in the work for three years. He and his team did everything they could to try and prepare these businesses for this day, let them know the progress of the project. Still, for so many of those small mom and pop businesses, it will be a financial and logistical hardship. I'm Casey Lund for Hawaii News Now. DOH is reporting 4,473 new coronavirus infections today. Meanwhile, the state also confirmed two additional COVID deaths. Hawaii's death toll now stands at 1,137. New today, a cruise ship with thousands of people on board just docked on Oahu. Lacey Denise joins us now with those details. The Ruby Princess, with more than 3,500 guests, docked at Honolulu Harbor shortly after 6.30 a.m. The 946-foot cruise liner is currently under the CDC's yellow category. That means there are known COVID cases on board or the ship didn't submit a daily required form to the CDC on time. The state requires visitors to be fully vaccinated or tested. 
Earlier this month, the Grand Princess became the first cruise ship of the year to dock in Hawaii. It was also under the CDC's yellow de designation. The CDC is still advising everyone to avoid traveling on cruises regardless of vaccination status. The agency says the chance of contracting COVID-19 on a ship is high. For This Is Now, I'm Lacey Denise. Australia reported 80 new COVID-related deaths this morning, its highest number yet, but officials are seeing some positive signs. Their most populous state, New South Wales, is seeing a slight decrease in hospitalizations. Meantime, officials are warning surfer Kelly Slater that he will not be able to compete in upcoming events in Australia if he is not vaccinated. Slater has not revealed his vaccination status. However, he recently defended tennis star Novak Djokovic, who was deported from Australia for not being immunized. The World Surf League's Australian events are scheduled for April and May. The federal prosecutors who convicted the Kealohas and recently arrested three former city officials have made it clear they are not done yet. As Lynn Kawano reports, more well-known politicians were called to the grand jury earlier this week. One week after three former high-ranking city officials were arrested, the special prosecution team was back at the grand jury in the federal courthouse. Former U.S. Representative Colleen Hanabusa Thursday afternoon after testifying for about an hour and a half. She followed Ann Kobayashi, former city councilwoman, who says the prosecutors asked about political donations from engineering and architectural firm Mitsunaga and Associates. I was asked a lot about um, campaign donations, campaign spending. The firm and its employees and family members have donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to various political candidates over decades. Federal prosecutors are looking into some of those contributions. Hanabusa and Kobayashi were witnesses, not targets of the investigation, but the line of questioning shows Dennis Mitsunaga and the firm's political ties are part of the case. The FBI and special prosecutor Michael Wheat out of the San Diego office are focusing on. Wheat was originally appointed to prosecute Louis and Catherine Kale Loha, the ex-police chief and deputy prosecutor who were convicted of obstruction and conspiracy in 2019. That investigation led the feds to former corporation counsel Donna Leong, once the city's top civil attorney, who was arrested last week, along with Roy Amamiya, Honolulu's former managing director, and Max Sword, once the police commission chair. All were indicted last month by the grand jury on a conspiracy charge. What we've seen before is, you know, Mr. Wien and his team are focusing on one issue, but then when they do that, they find a second issue. And then sometimes they find a third issue. And that does happen a lot when you're investigating criminal conduct. And Wheat's team is zeroing in on Keith Kaneshiro, the ex-prosecuting attorney suspected of improperly prosecuting a former Mitsunaga and Associates employee who sued the firm. Kobayashi was a grand jury witness last year, too, ahead of the indictments of Leong, Amamiya and Sword. And she says an outside prosecution team is important to weed out the city's corruption issue. That's what's good about having someone come in and look at oh, the way we do things here. And he was a very fair, very professional person. I think that we need that to sort of help clean up whatever we need to clean up. The grand jury took several weeks off because of the COVID surge. This was the first session in more than a month. I'm Lynn Kawano, Hawaii News Now. An incredible tale of survival has come out of Tonga. A man survived the tsunami by swimming for 28 hours. We first read about it on the Sydney Morning Herald. Lisala Folau lived on the remote island of Atata. It's about 30 minutes by boat from Tonga's capital and has a population of only 61. He was swept out to sea by one of the tsunami waves but somehow managed to stay afloat. And despite pleas for help and even seeing a police boat, he wasn't rescued. 28 hours and about four miles later, he swam ashore to Tonga's capital and appears to be doing okay. This map is based on a rough estimate from a social media post from a family friend. The United Nations says every building on his island was either damaged or potentially damaged. And Peruvians are racing to save animals caught up in a devastating oil spill that has been blamed on the volcanic explosion. Officials say that some 6,000 barrels of oil were spilled in the incident and leaked onto more than 20 beaches. Not only has it contaminated waters along the coastline, it's also led to dead birds washing ashore. Peru's president has since declared an environmental emergency.
Also new today, President Biden delivered remarks on how his administration is dealing with those supply chain issues. Skylar Henry joins us from Washington, D.C. with more on that. President Biden was joined by Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo and the CEO of Intel at the White House as he hailed the company's plan to invest $20 billion to build a semiconductor production facility in Ohio. Folks at home might be wondering, why is such a big deal for manufacturing something so small the size of a postage stamp? Well, semiconductors are small computer chips that power virtually everything in our lives. The historic announcement comes amid a shortage of the microchips worldwide, slowing down production of cars, smartphones, and other household items. Because supply is low, we find ourselves in a position that we're really behind the curve. Prices are going up. The Biden administration is now urging Congress to pass legislation to strengthen research and development that will help alleviate bottlenecks as a result of the pandemic. Congress needs to pass that bill. President Biden's push to fix and improve the nation's supply chain issues comes on the heels of him marking his first full year in office. He says the bipartisan infrastructure law and his Build Back Better plan will help produce a more productive economy. After months of setbacks, the president says he's now looking at ways to break up his signature $2 trillion plan into smaller chunks that might have a better chance of passage. We're going to get as much, a big mountain-sized chunk, whatever you want to call it, as much as we can of the Build Back Better agenda that we can get 50 votes for. The White House has not given a new targeted price tag for the spending bill or indicated what exactly it would include. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Rock star Meatloaf has passed away. The Texas native was best known for his Bat Out of Hell album. He sold more than 100 million records and had roles in more than 65 movies. His family did not reveal the cause of death. He was 74 years old. More sad news to pass along from the world of entertainment. Louis Anderson has also died. He had a four-decade career as a comedian and actor, and it included his unlikely and Emmy-winning performance as a mom to twin adult sons in the TV series Baskets. He was 68 years old. Here's a clip from when Anderson visited Hawaii and our Sunrise Studios back in 2017. I first came here in, I guess in the 80s, I was thinking, or early 90s, to the uh, Big Pink Hotel, the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. The Royal Hawaiian at the Comedy, the Comedy Store. Sh mm -hmm. I think it was Roseanne, me, Sam Kennison, Jim Carrey. And, uh, you know, we came here and there was a whole group of us. It was really fun. How was it traveling with all of them and coming to the islands? Cause... It was dangerous. It was dangerous, <laughs> Billy. It was, I was the least, I was, you know, those guys were high energy, high octane, but great people. All of them. All of them really great people. You say that when you step off the plane here in Hawaii, you feel different. Yeah, you know, when you land and you just feel... You feel like, okay, settle, lay it. Just, we're in no hurry. It's Hawaiian time now. Mm. And you know, there's something really, um, it's really great about that. You can relax. And I just got to the hotel. I looked at the blue note, you know, mm -hmm. and boy, what a beautiful, my heart uh, sang when I, when I saw that. What a, what a jewel you have here on the island. Thank because you. Because that hotel, my dad was a jazz musician, so it means mm -hmm. so much to me to play there. And if you don't like me, come down and at least see the room. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Anderson there from our interview back in 2017. Big fan of him myself. Loved the cartoon as a kid, Life with Louis. And, of course, he hosted the family feud for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And it's also just so sad to think of the celebrities we've already lost this year. Yeah, Louis Meat Anderson. Yeah. yeah, and such a distinctive voice, such a powerful, you know, personality. Uh, and I always remember think back to the scene in Coming to America when he was working yeah. at McDowell's and oh he was God, sing, totally he was he was yeah. washing lettuce and he next up he's going to get to fries because that's where the big bucks are. <laughs> so. His story he just shared with us is there in that archive piece. Can you imagine coming to the islands with Roseanne and Jim Carrey? Yeah, just casually. <laughs> yeah, casually. Sounds like a party. But yeah, a tough year for celebrity passings. Definitely, and we'll post that interview to our H and N digital platforms for you. Let's take you outside live right now. Could you? Ask for a more gorgeous Aloha Friday. I don't think so. But there are some changes in the conditions out there, especially with surf. Here's Ben with an update.
We once again have that high surf warning that's going to be going up for north and west facing shores. It's already posted until 6 p.m. tomorrow. We also have a small craft advisory that's up for the coastal waters right around Kauai and Oahu as well. We will have the possibility that the high surf warning could get extended and expanded to the west facing shores of Hawaii Island. For today, this afternoon, we're looking at 20 to 30 foot waves for the north shores of Kauai, 18 to 22 in Oahu, Maui with 12 to 16 and even the west shores of Kauai could get some pretty massive surf and it looks like that surf will be peaking tonight into tomorrow morning. We'll have the possibility of a small east swell, but things will quiet down as we head into next week. But all in all, looks like some extra large surf for tonight and tomorrow. And over the next seven days, those trade winds are going to be building back in. Mostly dry weather, except for those showers as we are expecting tomorrow. A few more showers on Tuesday, but other than that, Typical trade wind weather finally returning. Bitter cold temperatures are expected across the East Coast, while threats of ice could impact the Southeast this weekend, affecting travel conditions. Emily Iketa has the story from New York. Hey there, well this is the type of cold that hits you in the face when you step outside your door and can even cause frostbite in within just a matter of minutes. More than 60 million Americans today facing wind chills at zero degrees or even below, including in some major cities like Minneapolis, Boston, and not far from here in New York. An Arctic blast sending bone chilling temperatures from north to south. Some areas will even see or feel like negative 40 degrees, just a staggering number there. And this all the while, uh, freezing rain will be hammering parts of the southeast. North Carolina of particular concern. An ice storm appearing to head that way. It could bring up to a half inch of ice. And when that much accumulation happens, it's very heavy and it can cause power lines and tree branches to break. And that ultimately leads to those widespread power outages. Remember, keep in mind, just a matter of days ago, tens of thousands of residents in North Carolina were just without power amid frigid temperatures. And here they are finding themselves possibly in a similar position, just a relentless season uh, for that part of the country. I'm Emily Ikata in Katona, New York for NBC News. As the world gears up for the Winter Olympic Games in China next month, Polo Ralph Lauren just unveiled its designs for Team USA yesterday in New York. These are the official Olympic uniforms that American athletes will wear at the opening ceremony on February 4th, as well as casual wear for the Olympic Village. And this year's gear has some special features. As temperatures drop, the fabric expands to increase the amount of insulation provided by the garment. As temperatures rise, the fabric contracts to provide a cooling effect. It feels awesome. I'm, more, I'm one of those athletes where like you look good, feel good, um, do good. So being in the Ralph Lauren fit um, just makes me feel great. It's lightweight um, and durable, so it's just perfect. It's always very hot here in the h and Digital Center, so I could use that gear for sure. The cooling effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah the exactly. It's about to effect. say. Yeah, that looked like some pretty uh, serious winter wear right there. Well, let's see what else the internet is talking about. And I think everyone's going to agree with this story. Check your GPS because it could be a rocky road ahead. Wallet Hub is out with its list of best and worst states to drive in. And guess where this story's going? I think you know. Hawaii is the distinct honor of being the worst state for commuters. This is due to a number of factors, including congestion and gas prices. Mm -hmm. They didn't include those potholes that I'm seeing everywhere, nope. though. Oh, my gosh, they're so bad out there. Seemingly Iowa. more and more potholes, too. Really? I think it was that, <laughs> that weather we had. Iowa was considered the best. Not a lot of traffic there. I think that makes sense. Oklahoma, Kansas, and North Carolina rounded out the top four. That, yeah, I, I believe that. That's a stressful story for Aloha Friday as you head into the afternoon commute, right? Get off work early, guys. <laughs> Get off work early. What did you find, Mark? Uh, also online, changes are on the way to Twitter. The platform says it will now let some users set an NFT as their profile picture. Uh, NFTs are the new craze. Fill me in, man. Uh, I, don't, I still don't understand. Stands, yeah, I, that's why <laughs> it stands for non fungible token. I know that much. And it's a one of a kind, verifiable, digital, collectible. See, does that make it 
More more clear? No? Okay. I need a teenager. Uh, it, it's only This feature is only available to those who pay for the Twitter subscription service, and users who click on them can learn more about the artwork that is attached. So NFTs continuing to make their way into the uh, pop culture lexicon. And make tons of money, too. Mm-hmm. I know that. Uh, also online, McDonald's with a big announcement today, announcing the blueberry cream pie is back. After a five-year absence, the delight filled with blueberries and vanilla cream lands on the menu again. It is available at 6,800 U.S. locations. Checking back to see if it is available here in Hawaii. Um, But, of course, I mean, we talk about the blueberry cream pie, but the taro pie is undefeated. Yeah, that's awesome, and it's so unique to hear. Our special McDonald's menu. Just thinking about it. What's your favorite McDonald's dessert? Do you have one? Uh, Either the taro pie or the halpia pie or also to the hot fudge sundae. Uh, See, uh, I'd go the ice cream route. I'm always a fan of the McFlurries. I get it with pretty much everything in it, every mm -hmm. topping you can get. Oreos, M&Ms. Caramel. And then I always get extra Oreos and extra M&Ms. So there's not much ice cream in mine. It's all candy. (laughs) Pro tip right there. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Just fill it with I like to hoard it from the machine so it's not as embarrassing, (laughs) too. Great. (laughs) All right, speaking of food, there's some big changes coming to the produce section, maybe, with some high-tech developments. Here's Ian Lee with more on that. No matter how you slice it, preparing onions can be a tearjerker. Uh, well, you cry. You cry. You cry a lot. I've never seen an uh, onion that cannot make me cry. But after decades of crossbreeding less pungent onion varieties, growers produced a new type they say won't make cooks cry. Tearless onions, first marketed as sunions in the U.S., are now in Europe, after farmer Robert Aldershaw helped bring them here. People do pay a premium for what we would call premium onions. But hold up. Why do onions make us tear up? It actually produces a very small amount of sulfuric acid in your eye, and then your eye's natural defense is to to produce tears to wash it away. Tearless onions taste milder. That's because on the pyruvate scale that measures the pungency of onions, the tearless variety lands on a three, while your typical onions hit about seven or eight and some find the new onions quite appealing. Is that true? That's what they say. Wow. Is that a game changer for you? That is, it is, it is. But their higher price might make people's eyes water. Paying three times the cost of of an onion just to kind of get rid of the tears, absolutely no way is that worth it to me. You can suffer through the tears. I can suffer through the tears. Sometimes it's nice even. While the new onions may be easier on the eyes, most agree it's the layers of flavor in the mouth that'll matter. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Pumping out the puns, Ian Lee. I was about to say that story has layers, but then I know, the story it's ended with it was sitting it was, right there. It was really funny. It wasn't a tearjerker. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We're there good. it is. We're good. Is it Friday? Guys? Keep it rolling. <laughs> All right, more entertainment news. We're moving along. No more puns. But this is huge, guys. Huge, huge, huge. And a lot of fans of this series. Netflix has just confirmed today a green light for a second season of Squid Game. The Korean action drama took the platform by storm. And it streamed worldwide with 1.6 billion, billion that is, hours watched in the first 28 days of its release the series also scored three golden globes including best drama and i've only saw bits and pieces of it but i've happened to walk in only on the most gruesome parts imaginable so it made me not want to watch well it turns out you have a weekend assignment now right you have to add to the hour stream because squid game is an amazing show and it's so exciting to hear that there is going to be a second season to see how this story develops. If you watch season one, you will see that there is room for a second season. So we'll see where the story goes. Yeah, and we'll see how the news goes for the rest of your day, guys. Mark's going to be back first at 4 coming up on KHNL. Of course, that's at 4 o'clock. And he'll have all the headlines from throughout the day to keep you updated, to get your weekend started. Also, to get your weekend started, I wanted to leave you with this. Some adorable turtles being released from Indonesia. (laughs) 